Uh, hi, my name is Kurt Youngling. I'm the professor of Earth Sciences at North Central Michigan College here in Petoskey. And I'm glad to be participating with Emmett County to work on this blast from the past. And in this blast from the past, we're going to take you back a couple hundred million years and talk about Petoskey stones. So our Petoskey stones, everybody that comes here to pick up fudge and Petoskey stones is one of the, the big exports, I guess we might say, we have for this area. And I wanted to just give you a little history lesson and look at them the way a geologist might look at them, more than just a pretty rock sitting on the shoreline. I often tell my students that just like people, rocks have a story and a history. And they're much more interesting than their name. Just like you and I, we have a history and a story that's more interesting than just our names. And so we'll kind of work our way through and talk about that. To a scientist, we might refer to the Petoskey Stone by its scientific name, Hexagenaria, which is basically because of its hexagonal shapes. And it's a fossilized coral reef. Now, obviously, Michigan right now does not look like a great place for growing coral. And so we often pick up a stone and we try and interpret where it came from and how it got here. And we have a choice. If we look at something, we say, that looks like coral. It's made of the same material as coral. It's got the same shapes as coral. We have a decision to make as geologists if we're going to interpret this. One option, there were corals in the past that instead of liking warm, salty water, like to run around in northern Michigan and go skiing and things like that. Or northern Michigan in the past looked a lot different. And since we haven't seen any corals that like to ski, we're probably going to go with the option that northern Michigan wasn't always the same environment that we see today. So if we look at the Petoskey stone, like the one I'm holding, the classic one we might find at a, a gift store, it's all polished up and shiny. It's got this nice rounded shape, and we can see all the shapes of the little coral cells in there. And what I'm standing on right now is an old shoreline of Lake Michigan. And you'll notice that we pick up most of the stones around here. Maybe they're not Petoskey stones, but they've got that same rounded shape. And so while our Petoskey stone might tell us a little bit that it used to be a coral reef, this rounded shape is telling us that at some time after the coral reef, there was a mechanism or an erosive force that rounded off and polished down the stones. And you'll see people walking up and down the old shorelines trying to find these stones. A little easier when it's rained recently because the water makes the rocks, the textures show up in the rocks a lot better. But if you see these round shapes that I'm holding in my hand, the other thing we notice is I'm on the shore of Lake Michigan and there's no sand. So where's the sand? Well, one thing we could do is look down to Petoskey State Park and that's where all the sand went to. And if we were thinking of an environment where the waves could move all that sand down the shoreline, that at the time, there was a lot of wave energy here, enough to not only move the sand, but carry it all away and leave only behind the bigger grains that it couldn't pick up. This is something that geologists call a lag deposit. We're left with what's left behind, what the waves couldn't move along the way. But as the waves were crashing here and moving all that sand around, it would have been the equivalent of you or I putting on a pair of gloves made of sandpaper. And every time a wave crashed and ran over these cobbles, it would have rounded them off a little bit, rubbed them off, and if I had a gloves made of sandpaper, I could go back and forth and back and forth, representing wave after wave after wave, and I would eventually make these curved, nice shapes. We duplicate that in a shop, getting finer and finer sandpaper, and that's how you get the real nice shiny Petoskey stones. They're not this pretty when we find them on the beach, but they are often rounded off, and so that tells us a little bit about their history. At one point in the past, they were a coral reef, and then much later, they were stones on a shoreline being beat up as waves carried sand and moved it all over the place. And like we had said before, all of our stones, every rock has a story. And we'd love to be able to tell that whole story. And we've been piecing together it a little bit at a time. And so we had a time where Michigan was a shallow sea, a place where corals and clams and things like that were quite happy. Occasionally that sea dried up, which gave us the big salt beds down in Detroit. But for about, from about 600 million years ago to about 300 million years ago, this sea was here shrinking and growing a little bit at a time, but slowly just filling up with sediment and filling up with coral reefs and dead critters. And that's what gave us the, the bedrock in this area. Not surprising, we find these along the shoreline today where the waves are crashing and eroding the cliffs. If you wanted to go find one of these, not as a little pebble, but actually in the rock cliff, I would recommend walking the cliffs over at Bay Harbor. 
And if you look closely, but careful, because they are cliffs of rock that do fall down, but you will find little corals stuck in there. And so that's where those, the bedrock that's holding onto these. Then we have to think about a mechanism that would have broken it out of those cliffs. Also, if we talk to folks around the area, it's not just along the shoreline. They find them in their backyards. And so our Petoskey stones, maybe not beautifully polished in people's backyards, that coral is still there in little cobbles and pebbles. And so we need a mechanism that was able to not just move things up and down the shoreline, like we've talked about already, but actually bring them up into people's backyards and all over the, north, uh, the lower peninsula. So if you want to find it in bedrock, you want to look where those rocks are exposed. And mostly that's, uh, again, basically pick your favorite cement plant. Um, Charlevoix, Bay Harbor used to be a cement plant. Go over to Alpena. Um, all those are where people are trying to get basically limestone out of the ground where it's not buried by glacial deposits. And that's where you can find the actual corals in the rock the way they would have been living. Otherwise, when we see them in people's backyards and up and down the shoreline, that's evidence that glaciers and waves have moved those stones from somewhere else. Uh, and Michigan was run over, over the last two million years, we've been run over at least four times by large ice sheets. Um, the problem with that, trying to figure out how many, is every time an ice sheet comes through, it obliterates the evidence from the previous ice sheet. But as they scrape along and pick up stones, they'll drop them in different piles everywhere. Then as the ice melted, you melt a big block of ice, you get a big body of water. And so we would have had large lakes in the area, even bigger than the Great Lakes that we see today. It's rather unfortunate we call them the Great Lakes because they were even bigger in the past, which kind of puts us at a tough point as to what we would call them. The Greater Lakes, it, it doesn't really roll off the tongue. Um, but if you drive around Petoskey and Harbor Springs, you'll see flat bench-like features along the shoreline, what we call terraces, and those are the old lake levels. And so as those lake levels shrink after we melt the glacier, lots of water, big lake, that warming trend, then once the ice is completely melted, that warming trend is going to shrink the lake and evaporate off the water. And about four to 6,000 years ago, the lakes were down to about the level they're at now. And so since that time, that waves crashing has been breaking some of the corals out of cliffs, like over at Bay Harbor. Also, it's been reworking all the glacial sediments that carried all the broken bedrock as the glaciers came through here and reworked all those sediments. And so that's why we find them along the shoreline today. And that's why you can find them from pretty much Traverse City all the way up the coast. And you might even find them on the Lake Huron side because the glaciers spread them out a lot further than they originally were. And then the wave action has actually moved them a little bit also in addition to that. And that's why we find them in backyards, why we find them along the coast and why our tourists are going to come by and hopefully pick one up and get excited about it.